Hello everyone, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan, your ever-curious observer of all things human. Actually, I'm just here to point out how odd it is that we humans seem to treat our bodies like second-hand cars, until they sputter and break down. More like tragically hilarious. I'm Alara, your resident comedic health nerd, here to remind you that if you don't put gas in your body's fuel tank, well, you might as well park yourself on the couch until further notice. Speaking of fuel, we're tackling the idea that we're essentially each a car without proper gas if our cells, specifically our mitochondria, aren't up to speed. I never thought I'd compare my body to a sedan, but apparently it's apt. Now, according to Dr. Mercola, cellular energy is everything. And guess what? You can't just duct tape a solution when the tank's running on empty. Duct tape is my usual answer for everything, but apparently not for mitochondria. Let's start with exercise. Everyone's favorite word, right? Absolutely. There's nothing more thrilling than slogging through a workout while listening to your internal voice say, hey, is Netflix still an option? But here's the deal. Exercise is crucial because it triggers mitochondrial biogenesis. That's a fancy way of saying our cells create new powerhouses to supply the energy we desperately need. I'm all about new powerhouses. Where do I sign up? You can sign up at the local gym, or better yet, on your own sidewalk. High-intensity interval training helps stimulate your mitochondria by making your muscles burn through ATP, like they're playing a game of who can run out of fuel the fastest. So, basically, push yourself really hard for a short time, then rest, then push again? That's the gist. Dr. Mercola points out a form of interval training called interval walking training, very approachable. You do three minutes of gentle walking, then three minutes of brisk or intense walking, alternate like this for half an hour. So even I, in all my dignified middle-aged glory, can manage intervals by stepping briskly between lampposts? That doesn't sound too dreadful. Exactly. Start small and build from there. The key is you're forcing your muscles to adapt which basically commands your cells to produce more mitochondria. It's like telling them, hey, we're not messing around. Either get it together or we're never climbing a flight of stairs again. I do enjoy stairs, mostly because it's a good excuse to breathe heavily in public and not look suspicious. Let's talk about resistance training next. I've heard it's like hooking your body up to a metabolic booster pack. True story. Resistance exercises, squats, deadlifts, spike your muscles need for immediate energy. That triggers the same effect on those mitochondria. Plus, Building muscle helps you burn more calories at rest, enhances insulin sensitivity, and basically turns you into a metabolic superhuman without the cape. I'll pass on the cape. I'd probably trip over it. But I will note Dr. Mercola's caution about overdoing it. Apparently, once you exceed about 130 minutes of weekly resistance training, you can begin losing some longevity benefits. Right. If you're in the gym for hours a day, your body might stage a revolt. A balanced approach, some interval training, some resistance work, and enough rest is the sweet spot for healthy mitochondria. I love that we actually need to rest to reap exercise benefits. Music to my ears. Yes, your mitochondria need downtime. Otherwise, they go on strike. Overtraining can reduce mitochondrial respiration by 40% and mess with your glucose regulation. Not exactly the outcome we're aiming for. So, step one, move around in strategic bursts. Then, step two, sleep like it's your job. Dr. Mercola stresses that good sleep is not optional if you want to let your cells do their midnight repairs. Exactly. During deep sleep, your body basically checks the alignment on that vintage convertible, repairs the engine, and rotates the tires. Mitochondria get a chance to remove damaged parts, a process called mitophagy. So you're primed to bounce out of bed full of vigor. And if you're like me and think you can hack it on four hours of sleep, your mitochondria probably have a meltdown. That's a meltdown at a microscopic level, folks. Yes, meltdown at the minuscule level. Also, if you disrupt your circadian rhythm by staying up too late, your body has no idea when to ramp up melatonin or growth hormone so you miss out on prime repair time. So in addition to telling me to start walking in intervals, now you're telling me to put my phone away at night because of blue light and EMFs. You're really messing with my bedtime scrolly scrolly routine. I know, but trust me, your future self will thank you. Blue light from devices crushes your melatonin levels, so you stare at your screen like a moth hypnotized by a porch light, then wonder why you can't sleep. Also, keep electronics away from your bed. That includes routers, phones, anything that disrupts the sanctity of sweet slumber. Fine, I'll do it for my mitochondria, but let's talk about something more uplifting, sunlight. Dr. Mercola loves the sun almost as much as I love a perfect pun. Sunlight is the rock star of this cellular band. Red and near-infrared light basically feed your mitochondria electrons directly. It's a cheat code for ATP production. Turns out you don't just eat your energy, you can literally soak it up too. So all those times my mother said, go play outside, she was actually helping my mitochondria get supercharged? Precisely. Sunlight also boosts something called mitochondrial melatonin, different from the sleep hormone from your pineal gland. Mitochondrial melatonin helps scavenge those nasty free radicals. So your cells are less stressed, less inflamed, and more energetic. I like the concept of scouring free radicals. Makes me think of a housekeeping brigade scrubbing away at the cellular grime. 
But apparently there's a caveat with sun exposure. Something about vegetable oils? Yes. Dr. Mercola says that if your diet is high in linoleic acid, which is in vegetable oils, your skin accumulates that stuff and becomes prone to oxidative stress under the sun. In other words, you burn easily. You want to phase out the seed oils and ultra-processed foods first to reduce your risk of frying like bacon in the midday sun. The point is, it might take up to six months to clear out a lot of that linoleic acid from your skin. During that time, you might want to avoid peak midday sun or at least limit how long you bake out there. Then, once you've cleared your system, you can safely enjoy those near-infrared rays around solar noon to maximize vitamin D production. But obviously, you don't want to cross the line into lobster territory. As soon as you see that barest hint of pink, you cover up or move to the shade. And if you're dark-skinned, you might not get that turning pink signal. In that case, aim for controlled blocks of sun exposure, 25 to 40 minutes daily, so you get the benefits without overdoing it. It's basically mindful sunbathing, only we do it in the name of cellular health, not just getting a tan. Our ancestors were onto something when they were outdoors most of the day. Absolutely. Modern living turned us into indoor creatures who glance at the sun only while dashing from car to office. Dr. Mercola's message is, get out, soak it up, but don't forget your diet shapes how your skin responds. You address your cellular energy at the root, and the rest of your body benefits. It's not just about symptom management. It's about truly fueling up the engine. And in Dr. Mercola's approach, you're basically revolutionizing your own personal health care. Instead of saying, let's cover up that weird rash with cream number seven, you figure out that maybe your body's cells are starved or stressed or lacking a decent sleep schedule. Exactly. The revolution is to return to the basics. Our ancestors didn't have to be told to eat real food, move naturally, sleep in the dark, or get sunlight in the morning. It was all part of life. Now we have to relearn it like it's an exotic secret. Though we get to enjoy the comedic irony of having advanced science confirm what your grandma could have told you for free. Eat well, get out in the sunshine, move your body, and don't skimp on rest. Grandmas always know best, or so they tell us. Let's remind listeners about the synergy among these habits. It's not just picking one and ignoring the others. You can't fix everything by doing intervals alone, or by sleeping 10 hours a night, but never seeing the sun. It all goes together, like a symphony of healthy habits for your cells. And if you're missing a section of the orchestra, well, you'll get a clumsy performance. Maybe your bowstrings are out of tune. So you want to tune all parts, exercise, sleep, diet, sunlight. So your mitochondria can belt out a harmonious tune. What a lovely, nerdy, musical metaphor. Dr. Mercola would be proud. By focusing on your cellular energy, you basically align with what your body was built to do. You handle free radicals more efficiently, your tissues repair better, and you bounce back from life's daily stresses which is the best possible scenario when your coworker sneezes on you or your dog drags you around the block. Let's also note that real deep health doesn't mean you never get sick. It means that when challenges come, your cells are resilient enough to keep you afloat. Resilience is the name of the game. What I love about Dr. Mercola's perspective is that it's not just about treating disease. It's about this bigger idea of living a life that naturally supports healing and prevention. No band-aids, no quick fixes, just giving your body the environment it needs to function at full capacity. And that environment includes limiting toxins and junk, like clearing out the grocery list of ultra-processed nonsense that robs your body of good energy. Because you can't out-exercise a daily assault of vegetable oil-laden chips, your mitochondria aren't that gullible. No, they're not. And the reward for your efforts is a system that runs smoothly, recovers quickly, and can adapt to stressors with greater ease. That's real longevity. Not just living longer, but living better. Meanwhile, mainstream medicine might hand you a tube of cream or a pill for every new symptom. Dr. Mercola is reminding us that we should aim for root causes, which, in the world of comedic analogy, is like fixing the engine rather than putting fresh paint on a car with a broken transmission. Or trying to steer with a flat tire. So if you want to see lasting results, energy to get through the day, a sharper mind, and a more robust physical presence, you focus on fueling these mitochondria. Exercise properly, embrace real food, prioritize good sleep hygiene, soak up daily sunlight, and remove those inflammatory oils from your plate. And once you do that, You'll discover you have the energy to, oh, I don't know, tackle your to-do list or go for a stroll at sunrise without feeling like a zombie. Because you are no longer a zombie, you're a fully powered, sunlight-charged, well-slept organism. That's the dream for us all. I've always dreamed of not being a zombie, so this is good news. Let's bring it home. We learned that by refilling our cellular tank, we can basically become that unstoppable force of well-being. And it's not complicated, just overlooked. So it's time to look at it. Yes, let's look at it and let's do it. The beauty of this approach is that it's universal. We all have mitochondria. We can all adjust our movement, sleep, and sun exposure. There's nothing in this strategy that's out of reach for the average person, unless you're allergic to the concept of nature, but that's another conversation. We'll schedule that for a future episode. 
For now, I'm Ethan, grateful that I can still be comedic while learning that my cells need to be on top of their game. And I'm Alara, cheerfully telling you to get off the couch, walk in intervals, lift something heavy, sleep in a cool, dark room, and let the sun give you a healthy glow, after ditching the vegetable oils, of course. Yes, and while we're at it, maybe wave goodbye to that soda habit. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. If you'll excuse me, I need to break up with my phone at bedtime. And I'll be outside for my midday stroll in the sunshine. See you all next time. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.